let me see. Hi, I'm Drew. Welcome to the Beggar's Woodshop. We always get new tools, and we always forget about something every time it creates an advancement. We forget to go back to basics. In this episode, that's exactly what we're going to do with our Shopsmith Mark V. Back to basics, right here on the Beggar's Woodshop. Where do I put this? This program has been made possible by contributions from our viewers. Thank you. It's always a wise idea to go back to basics with your tools. Like with dancers, going back to a basic always helps to refine your skill. Now, before we get back to basics on our Mark V, we need to talk about a couple of things. First off, this is a demonstration of a 1954 Mark V. As a result, many of the safety features that we look forward to are not existent at this time. As a result, I will not be operating the machine, just doing some changeouts, and hopefully you'll enjoy them. We'll even put up a timer for you to see how long it will take me between each machine. I'm also not associated with Shopsmith in any way. They do not endorse this program. They are not endorsing this episode. They don't endorse the channel altogether. In fact, they're not even paying me to do this. I have no association with them whatsoever but they are more than welcome to get a hold of me if they would like. All right, I've moved the shopsmith out to the back. Let's go out there and have a gander and get ourselves started. Come on. Before going any further, let's take a moment to talk about safety. Read the manuals that come with your power tools. The more you follow and understand those safety rules, the less likely you are to cause either personal injury to yourself or someone else. Breathing protection is always a must whenever sawdust is flying all over the place. Hearing protection with loud tools is also important. Don't want to go deaf before it's too late. But of course, the greatest safety protection you can take, eye protection. You will be thankful the day it comes in handy. Let's just pray it never does. We got the chopsmith all set up out here outside, and I'm gonna leave a timer down in the corner every time I change from tool to tool. But we're not gonna do that with this first one. So, where do we start? Well, every time you see a Shopsmith advertise, it's always a table saw. So why don't we set that one up? A couple of tables. Always remember which way you turn the locks. It can sometimes be confusing. Oh, you're the smaller one. <laughs> That's right, this is a 1954 machine. A few things are a little off. Boom, set up for our table saw. Now, like I said, I am not running operations on this thing. As you can clearly see, and we'll get a close up for you, there is absolutely no safety guards atop or below. Turning this thing on, trying to run it, would just be complete and utter death. We are not going to do that for this demonstration. Another thing to note is this table out here. We could put this on either side if we wanted to, or you could have a second one. Newer shopsmiths actually allow you to do a little more of that. All right, get that timer ready. We're gonna switch operations. Where are we going? Hmm. Well, the main reason I got this thing was the lathe. So let's get the lathe. Here we go.
time. Now, this is just the bass, okay? I haven't added a chuck or any kind of the pieces that you would need, like a faceplate, a live center, spur drive, things like that. That's because once the bass is set up, everything from there is far easier. Not too bad, hey? How good was that time? Hmm? Not bad? One thing you'll note, too, about the time. I have all the tools I need to access within an arm's reach and real close to me. That's how you can really help your operation. All right. Let's kick it up a bit. What's one tool that a lot of woodworkers need? Well, they need a drill. Specifically, a drill press. Well, why don't we switch to that next? Get that timer ready. Go. We need a table. And look at that. All set up with my drill press. See how quick and easy that was? <laughs> Not too bad. Didn't know it could have come upright like this, did ya? Yeah. One thing you gotta remember, and something I seem to be missing sometimes. But thank goodness I remember doing it like this. Lock your, your headstock and your carriage. <laughs> Otherwise these things are gonna go flying all over the place and it's gonna be even more trouble than you think. What next? Well, let's really mix it up. How about uh, the disc sander? Ooh, yeah, that's a good one. Let's do that. Got that timer? Go. Done. She likes to sing, doesn't she? Well, look at that. I got a disc sander. And I can even bring my carriage up a lot closer if I wanted to. Get nice and close. Not to mention, if I need to get it a little closer, I have a device right here. In fact, let's get this far enough away so you can see that. Advance the quill, you can get nice and close. This is also how you drill your holes. It's your quill advancement lever right down on this side. Speaking of drilling holes, why don't we get that uh, drill chuck back on there? And I'm sure you're thinking, Drew, you're gonna switch back to the drill press? And the answer, no. I'm not. What am I doing then? Start the timer, go. Of course, you want to be the difficult one.
What is this? A drill on its side? That's right. A horizontal boring machine. What do you need that for in a woodworking shop, you might ask? Well, let's say you're building a bed, and you've got to do four posts, and each post has got to be about, uh, ooh, it's almost seven feet high. Well, obviously, you can't fit that on the lathe. You have to do it in parts. Well, unfortunately, you're going to have to drill a hole to receive a mortise and tenon. How are you going to do that and then put the thing on the lathe? Beauty of the horizontal boring machine. Otherwise, it's a lot of fancier stuff just to set up a drill press. You don't believe me? Go find Norm Abram when he made these types of beds. He'll show you. Pretty good, huh? So from here, I can switch to any tool I want. Now, this is just the basic of the Mark V. From here, I could go on to other accessories. Bandsaws, jointer, planer, all kinds of other sanders and other accessories. But like I said, this is not a sales pitch. I'm only here to demonstrate this lovely machine. All right, that's all I got for now. Hopefully, I will see you next time, right here on the Baker's Woodshop. Shop.